All right, party people, welcome back. Good to see you, good to see you. Here we are with another episode of Valheim. We've got some good stuff today. We are going to be taking on the Elder and doing so much more. Let's get into it. All right, we are here at the second boss and we're just about to go at him here. He is a giant tree. <laughs> I got a few attacks. Uh, one of them, he shoots vines at you basically. Uh, get the first shot here. Um, he doesn't have too many attacks, but this one you don't want to be standing near these things. They will hit you. So keep an eye on that. That's the one where he shoots stuff at you. Go and just keep shooting them from afar, increasing skills. Get rid of this guy here. Ah, that's the problem with cameras, you can't see. I got stuck on something, a rock, or I don't know. That's okay. Because we've got a portal nearby. We are back. Perfect, let's go grab our stuff real quick. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. See what we get? Let's see what we get. Boom. Swamp Key Elder Trophy. All right. Let's give off that there. And there we go. That is the second boss. All done and dusted. He likes the spear. I do not like that spear weapon. <laughs> but yeah, that's the second boss. Alright, party people, want to talk about something really, really cool in this game. You have the traitor. Now the traitor here, nothing you can do can hurt because they are inside of runes right here. Anything inside a rune, one player cannot hurt another, even though this is an NPC, still applies. Okay? You can get hurt though, because it's not your rune. Now this guy here, Haldor, great guy, could use a little bit more merchandise in the game, but that's supposed to be coming in the next update, so fingers crossed. So this guy here, you talk with him. He's got a whole bunch of different things he can sell you. Uh, fishing rod and fishing bait is okay early game. I'd say that's more late game when you can make fish wraps. Uh, Ymir Flash, I believe that's only really used in making the Frostner, so... Again, more of an end game thing. Megging Jord? Megazord? I don't know. <laughs> this thing here is fantastic, though. Uh, I actually have one already. So I recorded this already, but the footage didn't save or whatever. So uh, I'm going to actually go back and show you guys what the boat looks like and all that stuff, too. Uh, this here gives the wearer superhuman strength. Uh, so, what does that mean? It means instead of being able to only hold 300, you can hold 450. See, if I take this off, my weight goes down to 300. That's the max I can hold. But with this on, it allows my maximum weight to go up to 450. So if you're just out there collecting berries and, and bone fragments and, and stuff like that, yeah, your inventory slots are going to fill up a lot more than your weight. But if you're sitting there trying to bring back ores or after you've done a mining session for stone or wood or any of that heavy stuff, this thing is going to come in super handy. Now you're going to see in a little bit, there's an item called the Wishbone. Uh, when you get that after beating Bone Mass, the third boss, 
you cannot have both of those equipped at the same time. It's one or the other. Uh, and I'll show that to you, if I remember, uh, after we beat the third boss. So this is kind of where we are right now. Um, you know, we have most of our stuff leveled up to at least level two uh, for the mace, for the shield, for the armor, uh, the cape. It's not a huge deal because capes all work the same way. Level one is one armor, level two is two armor, all the way up to level five. So you don't get a huge advantage from capes. The only ones that do are the troll hide. Uh, so if you're wearing the headpiece, the chest piece, and the leg piece, as well as the cape, you're going to have a stealth uh, bonus of plus 25%. Um, the wolf cape and the locks cape both have... Um, what is it called? Frost resistance. So that you can go actually in the mountains and do what you have to do there. So you don't really get too many set bonuses and things. So it would be nice to see if... They actually implemented more of a class system in this. Because right now everyone's basically just a warrior or an archer. And that's kind of it. So um, I'm not saying to add magic or anything you know, like that. But it's just not practical right now to be leveling up something like stealth. Because the only thing that's for is you know hunting deers, uh, boars, getting one quick attack off. And it just it takes way too long to level up any skill. So on my last server, most of my skills were in the 40s. Now, uh, to be fair, I wasn't doing a lot of the combat stuff. And, uh, you know, there was four of us. But already on my own, 42, 38, 43, 38. Like a lot of my skills are already so much higher. But if you took all this away to just give me knives and stealth... That's essentially what you'd be looking at. So it just needs a little bit more balancing if you want people to do things other than just using clubs, um, bows. Swords are okay. Uh, they're really only good when you get to like silver swords. I mean, they're okay before then. Like I wouldn't say they're bad, but when you get to the silver sword, that's when swords really pick up. Pole arms. I personally just don't like them. I, I really don't. But um, it would just be nice to see a little bit more variation. Like even if they gave something to unarmed. So change it from unarmed to armed. So you can equip gloves or or uh, brass knuckles or something. That would be cool. Like to just be able to go through it being a brawler class, you know. Um, that's kind of my little bit of, you know, complaint. But all in all huge huge uh in favor of pushing this game to anybody that wants to give it a try it's it is difficult but it is rajada okay good for you uh it is difficult but it is definitely a worthwhile game to play so that's that said so yeah this is a trader uh one thing i will say is i'm gonna actually finish where i was first <laughs> The Diverger Circlet, it's actually kind of cool, but it hurts you. So you get one armor, or two armor, sorry, for wearing this. But at the same time, you cannot equip a headpiece. That takes place over the headpiece. So my bronze one, let alone even getting into iron, silver, or padded, is already armor level 10. That's only a level 2. So you're going around with armor of 30 or 40, Every time you want to use that headpiece, you only get two armor for that slot. So by the end of the game, when you are wearing silver or padded or whatever, yeah, you know, it wouldn't really kill you to lose the armor piece and, you know, keep the rest of the armor sort of thing. Okay, but that's just for exploration after you've already done everything. So what's the point at that point? Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. So yeah, I don't recommend that personally, but... Uh, one of the other guys on the other server loves it. Yule hat. Uh, it's it's basically a Christmas hat. That's it. Nothing fancy to it. It's armor of one, so it's even worse than the circlet. Uh, I guess if you're you know role playing on the server and, and you wanted it to be you know a big Christmas celebration time, you know that could be something you wear. But very very niche use. Last thing I want to talk about with this guy here. Uh, is the money. So obviously I don't have any money. I, I left it at, at the base. But you've got rubies, 
you've got amber and you've got amber pearls, you can sell all of those. Now when you talk to this guy, he's only got one sell button, so it will sell one thing from your inventory. If it's a full stack, it'll sell the, the full stack. So if you don't want to get rid of something, and you want to trade with this guy, either one, don't bring it with you, or two, throw it on the ground before you do some trading. Because um, he could pick that item and then you, you've you lost it. Now, this game doesn't really have a purpose for anything, up, like for the ruby, for the amber, and the amber pearls, other than selling it to this guy. Nothing that I've noticed anyways. So if there is something, you know, put it in the comments, let me know, and uh, I will retract my statement, but for now, that, that's what it's there for. It's it's just a way to get more money. So, yeah. Uh, that's a trader in a nutshell. Here we go, party people. Oh, it's foggy. Oh, no. I'll give you a little bit of basics on the boat. Uh, since the footage got deleted from last time or corrupted or whatever you want to call it, here we go. So, on the boat, you've got the back rudder and you've got the hold fast. And you have a stool here. You can use all three of those, but in order to steer the boat, you do need to be on the rudder here. Um, there are four, well, five uh, positions it can be in. It can be in reverse, it can be in neutral, it can be uh, forward one, two, and three. Now, forward one is basically using the rudders, and yeah. So this is just using the rudders. Forward 2 is using the sails, and forward 3 is using all the sails. And look right here after this goes away. So you can see the way the wind is blowing. It's blowing right into our back, so we're going to be able to get maximum speed. So that's when you want to have it down. If that little black area um, in front of the boat was where the wind was, you wouldn't want to have the, the sails down. You'd want to be just using the ore power, which is power one, forward one, whatever you want to call it. So since the wind is at our back, that's what you want. And it kind of sucks right now because you can't see a heck of a lot. <laughs> um, just know this. Uh, there's three boats in the game. The raft, don't really recommend using that one all too much. Then you have this one that I'm on, the Carve, Carve, whatever you want to call it. And then you also have the Longboat. That one's made out of iron. I don't have that yet. Keyword being yet. Um, but yeah, when you're steering, you want to try to do little course corrections. You don't want to sit here and just reef the wheel. It'll make it way too hard to control. Um, so yeah, try to do little if you can help it. Now if you see, if you're in a fog like this and now all of a sudden you see land come up, yeah, crank it. Um, but it doesn't work too well when you're backing up or in this one, forward one. Uh, it doesn't work too well if you just turn it all the way because it's trying to turn more than it is go uh, in your direction. And that doesn't really work for you. So let's see how we are here. Uh, I'm going to go left a little bit. So that's the basics of boating. Ah, now it's opened up. So let's just enjoy this for a minute. Oh, I love this game. Just the boats, the travel, everything. It's just fantastic. One thing I will say with this boat that you can get away with that you can't get away with on the bigger boat is getting in too close to shore. Uh, because the tide the, goes up and down, and so does the land, and your boat is deeper. So you could actually see the boat here really isn't that deep, but the other boat is much bigger. And therefore, it makes sense, it goes down into the water more. So you got to be really careful of that uh, when you're driving the boat. Uh, but this boat and the raft, you could. Now, I don't personally really recommend using the raft unless you have to. Um, for me, there's, there's nothing worse than losing progress. So, you know, you've just been going for a couple hours and you just got one set of bronze. You used all the bronze you had and then you go out. Um, into the ocean on the raft and you lose that armor and weapons you're now back to going back to using that old pickaxe that you had and it's just not very much fun so 
that's kind of my talk on why I don't really recommend using the raft. But all in all, if you have to use it, use it. That's all I'll say on that. What's up, people? Just planted some carrots here and, uh, what is it? Oop, pressed the wrong button. Uh, I meant to push C to change the walk. There we go. Um, yeah, I was doing some planting and I said, hey, it's a nice day. Maybe I should uh, record what I've been up to. So, first things first, we've got this giant structure over here. We go all the way to the top in it. And it's a lighthouse. Now, you can't put fire up here. I mean, I could put a stone thing and then put a fire up here, but I don't even have iron yet to do the bonfire. Oh, actually, it's the bark, so I could do it. Um, so I just put a ward up here instead. When it's off, when it's on. It does put a little bit of light, so it's more symbolic than anything, but we have a good map in this game, so you don't really need a lighthouse anyway. That was just for aesthetics, and I wanted to do it. So I've expanded the farm and the borders a little bit here. Going to be able to get more crops in. Not that we really need the extra space for it. Over here is where I've been busy. So we have a fully functioning storage room. Should be good until the end of the game. Well, end of the current game. So we've got wood stone metals, food mats, uh, cooked food, raw food, uh, a bunch of miscellaneous stuff here. And then these are going to be all your crafting materials. Um, yeah, so we still need a few more things, but I don't know. I might not have enough storage. I'll have to see. I might be able to play around with it because seeds doesn't need its own, money doesn't need its own, ammo doesn't need its own. Yeah, so we can probably save two more rows if we really need it there. Uh, up here, I haven't changed anything. This is still our same forge we had before. Uh, workbench, I think the adds is new here. Uh, we've got some portals here, and then we go into this room here. This is our cooking room. So we have a cauldron here, which lets us get all this stuff here, and as we find more things, we will be able to, of course, upgrade and get better things. And this is going to be all for potions down here, so I've already brewed some poison resistance mead, so that'll be really helpful. And then we can do the rest of our cooking here, should we so choose. And right now I just have this set up as the living room as well, just to be able to have somewhere that I can get a comfort boost. Now you'll notice between the two rooms here, I've got uh, three and the building itself is a five by five. So I'm gonna do the same thing here where there's gonna be a gap of three and then another house, gap of three, another house. And essentially it'll be one big square with four different buildings, houses, Whatever you call it, I'm just kind of going for a different shape where you're going to have this little bit of space here in the middle um, that we can do whatever we want with. Over here, got the bores all set up. Perfect efficiency. So the way bores and wolves work is you feed them their food of choice and as long as there's two of them, they're going to be able to breed. Now there's a cap so that you can't get too many in a small area. So what you have to do is you have to make sure they are six apart. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So what happens here, um, like for the count, you can have up to six in this area here. And then you've got a space enough where they don't register with each other. And then another six here, six here, six here. For a single player world, this is kind of overkill. Uh, I will not be needing this much meat. I will not be needing this much leather scrap. So I'm just basically doing it just because I can. One thing I'm not sure of is I do have a wide open area here um, that I don't know what to do with. So I'd love to hear some suggestions down in the comment section of what you think we can do with this area here. Only thing I will say is it can't have anything to do with fire as the fire scares the boars and all you're going to hear is squealing uh, and it won't be very nice. So throw your comments down in the comment section below and let me know what you think. Alrighty, we are approaching a crypt. You can tell it's a crypt because it's closed off and it's got these green glowing torches out front. Pretty cool looking structures, pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to take care of this guy real quick. Get rid of him. There we go. <clears throat> now, 
there's only one way that you can get inside of these crypts. And that is by having a swamp key. So all you do is walk up to it, boom, you're in. So now we are going to take on a crypt together. Uh, it's going to be a lot like the burial chamber where it's pretty uh, dark inside. So maybe hard to see. <clears throat> One thing I would say is always have your weapon out when you're going through because you never know who's going to be in here. If you can, be careful of standing near torches and stuff when you're going to be getting hit because they can get destroyed. And if they're destroyed, it gets very dark in here. So let's see if there's any iron in here. Oh, 20 iron. Perfect. And iron head arrows. Boom. So we're going to leave this here uh, in this chest because there's no point in lugging that around because that's just going to over encumber us really quick. So what I would recommend whenever you're going through one of these swamps is find a chest really close to the entrance and put all your iron in there so you don't have to keep going out and coming back in. It would just make your life a lot easier. Now I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch through me picking through a bunch of this muddy scrap pile. I'll just show it. it's like mining anything else. Nothing happened there. And still haven't picked up any iron. Not the best representation here. Withered bones, okay. They're something that you're going to only get from these crypts as well. Uh, withered bones are very important because you need 10 of them. See, we just got a scrap iron there. Uh, you need 10 of them to fight the third boss, Bone Mass. Um, that really won't be a problem. Every crypt, I would say, has quite a few that you can find and loot, so that really won't be much of an issue at all. Uh, I would say you'd get between one and five between every crypt you do, and you're gonna have to do more than that just for the iron you need to get yourself going. So let's put any, oh, I've got three more, yeah. So we've got two just from that. Like there was no altar here, there's no nothing. We just got two from that, so yeah. Uh, I would also say, make sure you are watching the ground because you will see these scrap piles can hide very easily in the floor. So make sure you're going over the floor and the walls because um, there's nothing worse than you know being short one or two iron and having to go find a whole nother crypt. So that's the thought process behind that. So I'm gonna clear this out a bit and then we'll be back. Another useful tip when you're clearing out these scrap piles is don't take it all away. Leave a little bit so that mobs can't come in here and then you can just stand back from afar and shoot them with arrows. Now of course these enemies aren't particularly hard so it's not something you have to do but if you find yourself struggling that's a key tip for you. Now there is one important thing to remember that I did totally neglect on. You want to make sure you've got a good source of potions on you. So I've got six medium healing meads. You can use those every two minutes and it'll heal you 75. And you've got poison resistance mead which will last for 10 minutes I want to say. So it is something you want if you're going to be fighting anywhere near an ooze. Um, or if you're going to be fighting for uh, leeches and you're not just going to shoot them with a bow because that poison is deadly. So there's three ways you can get these withered bones. One is from inside chests where we actually just picked up one. Two is from mining out the uh, muddy scrap piles. And three is just seeing them littered here on the ground. So I already brought back five. And this is nine, so we're gonna have enough to summon bone mass just from this one crypt. That's so crazy, but it's awesome. And this is what you're hoping to find when you are inside 
one of these crypts. This tells you where the closest bone mass is. Now I've already seen him, um, so he was already marked off on my map, but this thing here is great. If you haven't seen the boss, it'll show you exactly where they are and the one closest to you. So Nero has also been playing and he has found that there is another bone mass up here. So this one obviously being much closer to our base is probably the one that we're going to use when we're fighting him. Alrighty, we have just completed the first crypt and this is kind of what you can expect to get from a decent crypt. So we got what, 77 uh, scrap iron, 7 chains, uh, 10 withered bones, plus I think I have 5 at the base. Got some ancient bark, uh, some leather scraps, you actually get that when you're digging through the, um, uh, the scrap piles. And then you get some money, so 126 money. Uh, three rubies, 13 amber, and eight amber pearls. So all in all, I'd say very, very productive day. And if you have a decent, I'm not even saying a great one, if you have a decent crypt, this is what you can expect to get from that. And this, my friends, is the rarest item of them all, the fabled turnip seeds. So you find these, you're gonna wanna make sure you get yourself some and plant it ASAP because they are very hard to find. And just one quick reminder to everybody out there, please comment in the comment section below what you think would be a great idea to put in this area here. Right now I've got uh, one of these guys here, uh, a ward, and I've got a few beach saplings, and that's just kind of something I've decided to go with for right now. But I'd love to hear your suggestions in the comment section below. And that will be the end of today's episode. If you did like that video, please make sure to hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.